Yay. How you doing? <laughs> I'm doing good, man. <laughs> All right. Cool. Welcome to this podcast is Uncalled For. What's uncalled for about it? Oh, well, you can't tell me this. Okay. Uh, oh, my God, what are you doing? I didn't see the big deal about the human body. I worship Cthulhu just for the free beer. Yeah, I don't go to Sam's Club either. But you didn't even give a chance for a wild card spot. What are we doing? T1. You're like, what did you do, son? Well, so the name of this podcast is uh, Stuff Uncalled For? This podcast is Uncalled For. Podcast, all right. Yeah, that was the most ridiculous ending to that game that I've ever seen. Oh my gosh, I gotta hurry up. Oh my gosh, I gotta hurry up. Oh my gosh, I gotta hurry up. We're looking at each other in the eye. We're not going to say anything derogatory to the other person. And, of course, neither of us is drunk. So I don't hear Pope Francis saying that he's a uh, prophet seer and revelator. What planet are these people on? And they look... Thank you, Black Mountain. See, this is a disgrace. How'd that happen? And it's got Chick-fil-A. Hey, we're getting somewhere. And now, your host for this podcast, Mike Chernefsky. Fuji! Hi, everybody. Welcome to the podcast. Uh, again, special thanks to Kansas City French Festival. I'm at you in a digital format. And, uh, and uh, today's guests, uh, we have a return guest for those of you who've been uh, listening to the podcast since the beginning. Uh, please welcome back to the podcast, Mr. Chris Hertz. Thank you, Michael. It's good to be here again. Mm-hmm. It's good to have you again. So we'll uh, start this uh, uh, with with the alphabet game and we'll start with the letter D as in Dr. Pepper is not sponsoring this podcast. Everyone is familiar with that is an agnostic beverage. Fairly sure you're correct on that assumption. Yes. Good to know that we're starting off here with common ground. How true, how true. Ice really makes just about any soft drink beverage, if you ask me, better. Makes any soft drink better, if you ask me. Just thinking about that myself. (laughs) Yes. Kind of nice to be on the same wavelength. Uh, Likewise. Many, many people like the taste of Dr. Pepper's 323 unique flavors. I was starting to say 3 and 20 like you do in any other language. Nobody's going to care about that, but that is a good point. We're talking about Spanish, for example, it would be uh, be 53. And uh, Japanese would be uh, Niju-san. Obviously, I'm not quite as familiar with either of those two languages as much as as, as familiar as you are. I, I think I tried a semester of introductory Spanish at the community college. Obviously, languages aren't everyone's uh, forte, but that's how we communicate, you know? People have developed language, and it's one of the more interesting evolutionary concepts. Quite true. Robots, they, uh, they, they, they don't speak the same way we do. They, they just read programs. They don't, they don't have feelings. They don't react. They, they just run programs. So I've heard, and so it's been uh, explored in science fiction uh, forever, it seems like. Technically true. Uh, I, I was actually quoting from a 1986 movie called Short Circuit with Fisher Stevens. You may or may not remember that that movie. Uh, in, in interesting piece of uh, trivia is that there was a sequel two years later. 
underrated film and uh, also as a uh, Dr. Pepper reference uh, I think that's one of the first things that number five actually uh, sees after he escapes that lab is the uh, billboard for Dr. Pepper and it says wouldn't you like to be a pepper too? <laughs> the very viral ad campaign that was in play at the time producer sales organization helped uh, to finance that film and there were plenty of product placements that were probably cut or at least that were shown during the closing credits to the film well product placements is has been in the film for for a while exactly and uh they they ought to just go ahead and add another academy award section for product placement in film and probably by the year 3000 they will certainly have one provided the Academy Awards continue. Uh, you know, we won't be around by the year 3000, but that's something interesting to think about. Zealously, I would uh, have to agree with you, whether you're talking about you or I or the human species uh, as a whole. Uh, but who knows by the year 2525 if anyone will still be alive. <laughs> Absolutely sure. I'm just talking about uh, you and me. I'm almost, I'm fairly hopeful that the human race will still be around for millennia to come. Because you could have been plural and it could have certainly talked about the entire human race. And I, I hope we're, we're still around too. There's, there's an all kinds of interesting futurism out there that's has worth in being explored. Certainly. Certainly. Don't you just know it. <laughs> And I feel we may have missed a letter there, but that's okay. Oh. Oh. All right. So, how are things? I would say uh, I, all of us are lucky to have survived last year, <laughs> in one form, in one form or another, and that can be taken so many different ways. Yeah, I agree. I, I agree. Uh, I think about this time last year, I was preparing the uh, first batch of um, fringe episodes for the podcasts. Uh, um, we had intended to do them uh, live, but obviously circumstances, excuse me, uh, dictated otherwise. But uh, overall, I'm pretty happy with um, how those episodes came out. So, Wonderful. So many conventions and gatherings and concerts and have been affected by not being able to be held. Mm -hmm. uh, it's less true of uh, sporting events. They're still holding sporting events, but in most cases, they're not letting a whole lot of people um, attend. Uh, that guy's lucky enough because of the uh, soccer team that supports uh, to attend a few of their games last year very lightly attended but uh, i'm still glad i had got a chance to see them what level of competition were they at uh, so so santa fe are a local uh, they play in a local league so, and they're semi-pro I didn't get out to see too many movies. How about you? Oh, heck no. Heck no. See how like all my movie watching or TV watching really has been right here on good old internet. I did get out to, to the movies twice last year, and it both were to see the cinematic adaptation of Sonic the Hedgehog. Oh. All right. So how's that movie? It is worth watching, and especially worth noting that when the visuals for the movie or the first trailer for the movie appeared, everyone was was put off by the way that 
Sonic the Hedgehog was animated and mm -hmm. an effort was made to redo those scenes. So Sonic actually looked like Sonic the way you either saw him in the video game or in any of the many animated series out there. Mm -hmm. As I seem to recall, uh, Sonic the Hedgehog at one point was voiced by Jaleel Whites, better known to uh, people of a certain age as Stephen Urkel. Yes, that's true. Yeah. I am blanking on exactly who did the voice of Sonic the Hedgehog for the movie, but I can look that up for you here real quick. Yeah, that's what well, IMDb is for, yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, let's do that in post. But I, I do know one factoid. The, the voice actor also performed the role of Dewey in uh, DuckTales 2017, a, uh, a recent reboot that was both on the Disney mm -hmm. Channel and Disney XD. Okay, cool, cool. Uh, I haven't seen any of the uh, new DuckTales, but I'm an aficionado of the old DuckTales. <laughs> What's nice is they've found a way to bring a lot of characters in from the Disney Afternoon lineup and integrated them into a very good universe. Mm -hmm. They The original DuckTales was more inspired by the... Uncle Scrooge comics that started around 1952, then they mm -hmm. were informed by any of the animated shorts that starred Donald Duck, etc. Although we're both familiar with the uh, Christmas special that aired that that had Uncle Scrooge as as uh, he's a Scrooge, yeah, yes. So that that that's always a, a fun thing to watch. Are there any? Uh, do you have? Uh, any movies or different things that you watch over the holidays as a uh, well um, I guess we could talk early South Park here because one of my favorite Christmassy things to watch is the original Spirit of Christmas short that launched South Park Woodland Critter Christmas is also always fun yeah yeah that that's a mess. That's pretty messed up. Uh, it, yay! It, it, our current Christmas can finally happen. Hail Satan! I I had to go there, ladies and gentlemen. There was uh, fortunately, I think you probably have a disclaimer at the start of it. So if if you do any searches and look that thing up, and know that South Park is typically uh, a show that contains mature themes and mature language and mature or just plain violence, you won't be surprised by what you find. Yeah, South Park's been around, I think, long enough for people to know that. But every single episode always starts with that disclaimer that it should not be viewed by anyone. <laughs> Is it... And all celebrity impersonations are... Done poorly. Done. Oh. Yes, yes. Always, always good. I, I know last season, just because of the restrictions on everything, that they weren't, that they didn't produce a typical full season of 10 episodes they have done two they did, specials yeah they did two two hour long specials i saw a little bit about the pandemic special and it was interesting because they basically had to send workstations to all their animators to the animators homes right it was, it was an interesting ad hoc solution to the right right problem and, and it's an interesting uh, episode to it. Start Cartman has a nice little uh, opening number. I need to dance. I don't have to do a thing. I love you, social distancing. <laughs> Just singing about the praises of social distancing and all, all that, ignoring school and uh, eating cheesy poofs as of their cereal. <laughs> And uh, the uh, the second Ray special the vaccination special kind of left me with a uh, kind of left me feeling sad as though they it felt like they were going to wrap thing wrap up the whole series, but uh, we shall see. Yeah, of it's course, been a few thing. years since they went to a ten episode format. Yeah, it's been a little over a year. Yeah. So, and, and totally understandable too. So, uh, 
So, uh, yeah, of course, one thing I've been watching a lot of has been uh, Star Trek. So all the uh, all the new stuff that's been coming out and will be coming out. So, yeah. Final Frontier, Below Decks, uh, a second series of Picard <laughs> and a fourth season of Star Trek Discovery. So yeah, it'll be Discovery Season 4 and then it's Lower Decks is the name of the series, not Below Decks. Uh, which is funny. It's fun. It's funny as heck. It's uh, Star Trek um, animated, first of all, so you could do a lot more things than you could do with a live action show. And it's funny. It's, it's intended to be a comedy and they do a good job with it. Uh, so far, my favorite moments from that show. Uh, uh, this this one focuses on uh, the ensigns on board uh, a uh, the uh, USS Cerritos, which is uh, not a glamorous ship at all. In fact, the uh, promo uh, material for this show said they're one of the least important ships in Starfleet. So. So as her as her so you have these ensigns um, in this particular instance, they're all uh, slacking in between jobs, and uh, they dub the term uh, "buffer time," and and then one of the ensigns happens to be in a, a turbo lift with the captain, and uh, mentions, "Oh, I made sure I did do all I made sure I did all my chore, my duties, and." Uh, Made sure I didn't use up all my buffer time. Oh, turn my left halt. What is buffer time? And it spends the, the rest of the episode <laughs> making sure everyone is doing their duties at <laughs> a certain amount of time <laughs> and uh, just driving everyone crazy and everything, except ironically for. Uh, the incident that blabbed about it. <laughs> yeah. So that's funny. Um, uh, Picard, that's certainly a departure from um, traditional trick as well, because it focuses primarily on uh, Jean Luc in his uh, dying years. Uh, uh, spoiler alert to anyone who hasn't seen season one of Picard, he dies in the final episode, but is a uh, reincarnated as an android, and uh, and uh, yeah, Strange New Worlds. That's the uh, Pike series, then uh, spun off from Discovery. That's in production as we speak. And there's going to be a kids' animation um, as well called uh, Prodigy, and that one uh, will feature uh, get this a holographic version of Captain Janeway and a bunch of uh, Delta Quadrants aliens, one of whom kind of resembles uh, the cheat from the uh, Homestar Runner cartoons. So. And uh, the actor who played Captain Janeway is re re reprising the role. Uh, yeah, yeah, Cam Mulgrew is, is uh, reprising the role. Uh, I'll be at this, uh, it's animated, so it's just her voice. So yeah, Nickelodeon. Uh, yeah, but it'll, they'll be in the uh, CBS now Paramount app as well. So, oh, all Star Trek in one app. I haven't looked for anything on Paramount Plus. Uh, what's your experience with CBS All Access? before they've renamed it uh, I, I had a good time with it you know I was able to um, I watch it primarily for I use it primarily to watch Star Trek but I could branch out a little bit more I have yet to uh, subscribe to the uh, Disney uh, app we'll definitely need to do that at some points because I'm certainly missing out on a lot of cool stuff and uh yeah. The fear of missing out is a good motivator for anybody, I, I, I figure. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, sometimes it's a 
good idea to miss out. So one of the things I learned about uh, recently, there was a festival a few years ago called the Fire Festival. Did you hear about this? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so a uh, music festival that's supposed to take place somewhere in the Bahamas the, and uh, everything that could go wrong did go wrong. And uh, people uh, were uh, screwed out of uh, thousands of dollars a pop uh, all because of this uh, whole fear of missing out thing because they, um, they know what they're doing marketing-wise with that thing, but uh, not so much on the execution. It was the Caribbean equivalent of Woodstock 94. <laughs> with fewer hippies it was overhyped and oversold it was supposed to be the ultra luxurious thing of concerts and but mm -hmm. it uh yeah there but yes it, it has taken on a level of infamy yeah it, so so i saw that they, there were uh, two documentaries uh, done on it which I've yet to see either of them, but I've heard about about them. Uh, that uh, there's this uh, one one woman in the uh, Caribbean who uh, made sure everyone got uh, fed. Yeah, they got fed cheese sandwiches, and but uh, she was out a lot of money because that's and uh, wound up doing a GoFundMe to uh, uh, get her uh, taken care of. So that was. That's probably one of the highlights was that that woman uh, was uh, able to recoup her uh, losses. But one of the funnier st stories I heard about that was um, that they uh, held a bunch of bottled water at customs and uh, the uh, the uh, sleazy organizer of this thing uh, told one of his underlings, yeah, go to the customs office and uh, 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 perform fellatio on the guy. <laughs> But the customer's like, no, just pay us. Pay us. You don't need to uh, get down on your knees and all that. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's uh, you, you just it's just one of one of those things. Yeah. Goodness, and there were no places for anyone to stay or be. The accommodations were non-existent. They were, they set up a bunch of FEMA tents. <laughs> and, yeah. That was if, though, and that was for the fortunate, fortunate people. That's where people made, that just showed it, up, yeah. It, uh, it, it made Dash Con look like Vegas. <laughs> wow Dashcon of course being the famous Tumblr convention that uh, basically ran out of money and uh, for a little bit more you could spend a little bit of time in the ball pit which was not much larger than a child sized inflatable pool filled with the, with the type of fears you would find in a, in a ball pit Yeah. But at least those people were, were at a ho hotel in you know in where they had access to running water right. and electricity, et cetera. But yeah, quite 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 the scenario there. Oh yeah. What was your favorite thing about last year if if you if you had uh, my favorite thing about the the past year, uh, well, I was probably I'd say uh, doing DoorDash has probably been the defining thing of last year, yeah. and I'm still doing it, of course, because uh, still gotta make money, and it's gonna and be a the idea was for it to be a second job uh, while I'm doing the uh, chess thing but it it's practically you know full-time but i'll still be able to do both uh chess and uh, doordash once we uh, get back a little closer to normal 
which uh, good news about um, I'm there. We're talking about June is when we'll start uh, being able to do uh, camps again, and uh, hopefully we all start to in the uh, classroom and the clubs again, uh, starting in uh, starting with the new school year. My favorite part of last year is that life didn't change too much for me. I'm not exactly a, a social person. Mm-hmm. I I would go hit the drive through I would hit my sandwich up, I would go to work, I would come home, and that would... It didn't change much for me. So that... <laughs> <laughs> that was what I liked best about last year. <laughs> All right. Yeah. If I had to, if I had to choose one thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, of course, on the chess side of things, you know, we've been doing uh, online tournaments using this very software, and uh, and uh, our good friends at chess.com as well. So, so it's so that in that aspect has been. Uh, good uh we because we've been doing it online we can have people from uh literally all over the world come and play chess with us and uh we have we have a couple of regulars from uh, mexico one of whom is an international master yeah what other countries or has it primarily been uh it's been primarily local people and uh, our two friends uh, from uh, Mexico. I've had the privilege of being able to meet with a few friends that I haven't been able to meet face to face using uh, this type of uh, video conferencing software as well. And I mm-hmm. think that's been a, a nice development being able to uh, use the uh, you know, broadband and the telecommunication infrastructure that's been developed over the last few years. Yeah, sure. Yeah, if it wasn't for this uh, software, uh, the, pod- the podcast would uh, really be in trouble, I think. Yeah. And of course, on the international thing, I'm spoiling for uh, everyone. This will come out after the right after the friend shows on our uh, on our uh, RSS feed. So anyone who's listening uh, it'll be the next one that uh, coming up that for everyone who's watching at fringe please subscribe to the podcast um it's with a, a gentleman in amsterdam so, so yeah talking about internet, a lot of, yeah a lot of discussion about football about that and correct association football Soccer. Association football, also known as soccer, but we touch on American football as well in that discussion. And we're not going to spoil it much beyond that, so do uh, keep an eye out for that episode coming up next. <laughs> it, it, it's an interesting point where we had spoken a little bit ahead of uh, this podcast today just to say about the different things that we didn't want to talk about. Mm-hmm. and. Since you you had already talked so much in that podcast about those subjects, and yeah. I'm just simply not knowledgeable on either of those topics other than a vague understanding of what they are, and the fact that our local team, the Kansas City Chiefs, have gone to the Super Bowl for two years in a row for the first time in half Ever. a century – well, yeah, for well, first time yeah. uh, ever going to to two straights, but but yes, first time in fifty years since they appeared in the Super Bowl before either of us were even born. So, yeah. yeah, I have a friend who's actually the same age as the Super Bowl, and his birthday is around the same time of the year as the Super Bowl. So it's very easy to keep those things in my mind sure. that's good to know yeah. all kinds of mnemonic devices to help me remember the birthdays of the people in my life do you do you find yourself using anything like that or uh no i don't but probably should probably should start so i don't know 
but yeah, that first Super Bowl, yeah, the Chiefs lost that Super Bowl to Green Bay. By the way, tell me if I'm stepping out of line if I sound too much like the host when you were the host. <laughs> no, I I I per, I prefer you know, kind of a this all back and forth and everything. If anyone wants to step in and mini host for a while, you know, that's perfectly all right. It's good. It happens. This is probably as conversational as I get, unless I was slightly more relaxed. Mm -hmm. I finally got together with some friends and we haven't seen each other in about a year and it was, mm -hmm. it was nice to, to get together. And I think we watched uh, an episode of, of Firefly. Take my love, take my land, take me where I can't stand. Yeah. Yeah. Love that show. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, in fact, uh, last time I had you on here the first time, yeah, we talked about uh, playing Comic Con and how uh, Adam Baldwin, the actor who played Jane, was uh, at that Comic Con. And all that. So that's something I'm definitely looking forward to is back to. Um, possibly going to those conventions and whatnot. Uh, before uh, before the uh, pandemic started, I was slated to uh, volunteer at uh, SalsamCon and uh, do some uh, media there. And uh, one of the uh, voice actors who was uh, invited, uh, the same guy that did that video we were talking about, uh, his name's uh, Bill Butts, and uh, who is a yeah, currently doing voice work in uh, LA. A pretty cool guy. Everything, and uh, it would have been a chance to get uh, get him on the podcast. So, Bill, if you're listening or uh, watching this, uh, please PM me, and uh, we'll get you on the podcast somehow. So, <laughs> yeah, Bill, whom uh, of course I met doing. Uh, student media at UCO. You you were both a student and I I guess you were a, a lab aide there in the uh, journalism and mm -hmm. media. Did they call it media arts or what? What did they call uh, it? Is, journalism it and media. It's basically is student media. Is what was yeah. So yeah. yeah. The way it was set, that way that student news center was set up, it was uh, uh, TV and radio and the ledger, all in one place. Yeah. The, the ledger was is the uh, student newspaper. Student newspaper, yeah. I remember back before they had, they built a dedicated building for the student services, that that used to be where financial aid was. Mm -hmm. That's about right, yeah. That's that's how long ago I've I've I I, I don't want to say I'm old, but I I I've been around for about the decades. same age. Come on. <laughs> yes, well, it's about get, getting on twenty five years out of high school. That's yeah. That's that's where that's the generation you and I are in. We're we're just starting to get to where. I don't understand these teenagers anymore, and I barely remember being a teenager myself. Mm -hmm. I don't um, know that I actually participated in anything that necessarily defines the American teenage experience either. Did, did you do anything that would typically be associated with the standard American teenage experience during your teenagers? Playing football. But that was that was only two of my uh, high school years. So <laughs> junior oh, senior year. Ah. Varsity and junior varsity. Yeah. Did you do any uh I know that they typically start the youth athletics very young. Sometimes the uh, you know five, six years old, sometimes younger. At what point had you started to, to play football in your youth? Uh, junior year of high school. <laughs> I'm, I'm being absolutely serious. Yeah. They let yeah. someone this with, is my, here's my with no on, uh, youth sports. Here's my thoughts on uh, American football. Um, 
because it is such a high impact sport, wait until high school before you even think about uh, playing it. Yeah. Because by the time you reach high school, you should be old enough to make those decisions for yourself. All right. Um, the Pee Wee level that you're, I think you're up time bats that's that's on the parents if the kids get brain damage because they're playing peewee football that's on the parents you get brain damage uh, trying to play football at high school level or above that's on you just because you're you're a little bit more aware of of what types of injuries, what kind of forces are in uh, play? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly. You want, uh, you need to make those, uh, you need to be informed about Here, I sports. thought we weren't going to talk about sports, but. Yeah, I guess we are kind of talking about sports. Yeah. I'm sorry. I feel like. Um, so on the subject of sports, uh, my uh, nephew, he's uh -huh. five now. And. It's going to be six here in a couple months. Uh, but he started playing uh, baseball recently. Um, I think he's, uh, I think he's plays, he's playing second base, but judging from the uh, video my sister and I posted. And uh, he's having a lot of fun doing it. Uh, but then in uh, baseball and football, two radically different uh, sports. Um, there's a, a great routine by the late George Carlin talking about the differences between baseball and football, which I highly recommend to, uh, to our audience. Uh, uh, baseball is played on a diamond in a park, the baseball park, but football is played in a stadium, sometimes called Soldier Field or War Memorial Stadium. I'm paraphrasing, but that's uh, basically the tone of the entire routine. Is uh, baseball is uh, very uplifting, everything, whereas uh, football is very militaristic. Yeah. One of the things I've been doing over the last year is watching a lot more YouTube than I had, and I was. Mm -hmm interested to find out that the early career of George Carlin is a little bit different or started to become a little bit different around the early to mid 60s. He used to be a lot more straight laced, but he started to become a, lit, a bit more cynical, a bit more on the side of social commentary after he observed the way some of his uh, fellow comedians were, were treated mm -hmm. by law enforcement, etc. Oh yeah. And again, I'm only talking early '60s. I, I don't want to try and approach any kind of uh, current event beyond any type of discussion of media properties. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Carlin himself actually uh, wound up in jail, and uh, in a case that wound up in the Supreme Court over uh, his famous seven words you can never say on television. And of those seven, I think you hear about four or five of them on TV now on a regular basis. So, One of them, I think, was repeated probably around 167 times in a particular episode of South Park. Yeah. yeah. And I know that because they had a they counter. Kept the running, they had the running counter in the corner there, and they got up to 162. So. Ironically... Uh, coincidentally, the number of uh, games in a uh, Major League Baseball season. <laughs> I I would not have known that particular no. piece of trivia. Yep. But uh, I don't even know if trivia is plural or not. I don't know if that's a trivium or. <laughs> That's a piece of trivia in itself. But yeah, the, the word uh, in question, yeah, the first of the seven words that you can never say on TV. And uh, 
And uh, it got to a point that uh, they don't even bother bleeping that word out anymore, depending on the uh, networks. So. They can get away a little bit more with with that uh, on on the basic cable channels than they can on the five or six major uh, over the air broadcast. I networks. even I even hear the word shit sometimes on the news. So. What was interesting uh, around twenty five years ago was when they first put the TV ratings on the screen, and mm-hmm. you. I, I'm pretty sure they can get away with it on shows rated TV 14 and TV MA. Right. And they generally have the SV, uh, L, and, and D secondary. Right. To, to tell people if there's language or violence or anything sexual going on. And you know that. The D stands for sexual dialogue. Yeah. So, eh, anywho, yeah, that, that I that don't know that they stuff. they they've yeah. been they've been able to get away with quite a bit more on on streaming. Oh yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, again, to use Star Trek as an example, you know, the first season of Discovery, first ever use of the word "fuck" in any form of Star Trek. You guys, this is so fucking cool. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, sir. No, you're right, cadets. That is fucking cool. So they've been a lot more loose with uh, language, uh, particularly Picard. Uh, quite a few uh, f bombs in that show. Well, that that is a very specific type of hubris. Yeah, the sheer fucking hubris, <laughs> and uh, certainly not the only f bomb dropped in that series today. So. Yeah. And it's interesting because I, I was pretty sure that the use of, of both uh, thermal and, and otherwise nuclear weapons had, had ceased, or at least we had developed more advanced weaponry by the 24th century in the Star Trek universe. Mm-hmm. I was really reaching. That that was supposed to be funny, but if it, it is, you know. <laughs> A-bomb, F-bomb, H-bomb. Yeah. Just... There, there's 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 uh, at, at least twenty other letters in the Latin alphabet we can we can go with to, to for for something there. Right, right. Mm-hmm. But but yeah yeah the advent of streaming really has loosened uh, things up in terms of uh, language being used. Not a bit unlike satellite radio. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I. Uh, it's funny. I, I could get satellite radio for my car, but I choose not to. In fact, uh, certainly in the early days of run, owning uh, my current car with the satellite radio, I kept being bugged by Sirius about. There's a well, well, I just don't want to pay for your service uh, i'll stick with uh, the terrestrial um uh, radio or uh plug my devices in and li- listen to a podcast there you know any particular genre of podcast that you enjoy yourself well aside from uh my own podcast uh i'll listen to sports podcasts i'll listen to uh, star trek related podcasts uh, there's a really good Star Trek related podcast right now called the Delta Flyers, which is uh, Garrett Wong and uh, Robert Duncan McNeil, who played Harry Kim and Tom Paris, respectively, on uh, Voyager. And they're re watching all of the Vo- Star Trek Voyager and uh, talking about what they remember about uh, uh, their uh, those particular episodes that they're reviewing and everything. So I highly recommend uh, that one. Uh, and I'm uh, listening to a few of my local uh, podcasters because now I'm the head of the uh, podcasters meetup and uh, listen, listening to and supporting 
some of my fellow uh, local uh, podcasters. So there's one, one uh, the uh, podcaster is a uh, former plastic surgeon, and her entire uh, podcast is about plastic surgery and the uh, different uh, different uh, procedures and everything. And there's another one that he came to one of our online uh, podcasts podcast or meetup meetups uh, once um, they do a uh, it's called the uh, the obscura where it's kind of like a game show uh, type thing that they listen to six different clips of a uh, particular uh, piece of media and they try have to figure out what it is so, yeah. do they also have highly to- recommended you do they have to secure the rights to that particular piece of media before they use it or that is a good question uh, uh i think because they are uh, commenting on it that it's if it, it would fall under fair use um, but uh yeah you do bring up a very good point about a uh, copyright uh, laws yeah, yeah. The local podcast community is that any in any way related to the local filmmaking community? Have, do you have any? There, there is a little bit of crossover. Um, there is a little bit of crossover. I do know of filmmakers who are in the uh, all or who are also in the podcast community, um, but not many. Yep. It's just another outlet for the for the uh, creative p- persuasion. Oh yeah, yeah. Same is true. Of, well, yeah, anything creative. Yeah, that, that is that is going to be the case. Yeah. So, and it's just an it's just another way to uh, network with uh, people about uh, doing stuff. So. Are there any particular online resources that you've used in creating the meetups or meeting those involved uh, in the pod, local podcast? Meetup.com slash podcasting hyphen 15 is the uh, podcasters meetup. So, so. So, of course, for those who have been living under a rock for the last almost 20 years, uh, meetup.com is a uh, place where you can set up meetup groups on any subject that you want. And um, and they encourage you to uh, meet uh, regularly and stuff. So, so with the podcasters think- meetup, we try to go once a month. So. I think the first time I ever learned about the phrase meetup was around 2004 that's yeah that sounds about right sounds about right i i want to think that was around the time that howard dean was running for the democratic no, uh nomination for president and yeah uh at least that was that is the context of when i first heard the phrase mm-hmm. yeah um howard dean i actually got to be in the same room as him a few years later at on the uh, JUCO campus. He helped, he uh, helped to uh, run a uh, workshop for for a weekend uh, there. So that's that's getting into politics, and uh, we, I will uh, just uh, end with that. Again, the dude is just... short in person. <laughs> I will say this: oh. the dude is short oh. in person. <laughs> Probably very pleasant though mm-hmm. oh yeah oh good good i apologize if we've we've if we seem to be running aground or if i've talked over you more than a dozen times nah don't worry about it don't worry about that The best thing to end awkwardness or at least what i've heard is is to call attention to it and it becomes less awkward 
<laughs> All right. I've watched a lot of YouTube. There's a channel out there called Charisma on Command. And uh, that's something I've... There are many things to learn on that channel. They analyze the behavior of a lot of celebrities during celebrity interviews, et cetera, and say, this is how you can have more charisma in this situation. Mm. Not to plug anything. I'm not compensated. I Yeah. Yeah, no one's making any money off of this uh, episode, but yeah, uh, I'm going to plug a, a couple of uh, YouTube channels right now. So one is called Sous Vide Everything, which is devoted entirely to uh, cooking sous vide. Are you familiar with that method at all? I am not even sure. I have never heard of that before. Okay. All right. So um, you and our audience are going to learn about what type of uh, cooking is that? Is that is that a? So I'm going to, I'm going to describe the process. So uh, you, the first step, you put your food in a plastic bag. You get all the air out of said plastic bag. Uh, sous vide comes from the French for uh, under vacuum. So you're basically creating a vacuum in this uh, in the bag. And then you put that bag with your food into a uh, tub of uh, hot water that's being heated by a uh, machine called a uh, circulator. And that circulator is set a, at a certain temperature for a certain amount of time. Um, I, I actually got one of these things uh, for my birthday this uh, past year and uh, have used it a couple of times. Uh, it works uh, very well, particularly with chicken. It seems to work really well. And and that's all you need to do is uh, you put your food in the bag, get all the air out of the bag, then put bag in top of hot water. And you're going to just let it sit there for, uh, for a while, uh, usually hours. Then you uh, take it out and you prepare it and everything in that that's basically how sous vide works uh, so yeah this particular channel they like to do a lot of experiments with uh, sous vide like they'll um, like one of my favorites is they um, marinated pork tenderloin with uh, various different uh, sodas and fruit juices and they would uh, do an experiment which one tastes better and Everything, so, or they would uh, do experiments on uh, cooking at different temperatures at different amounts of time and everything. So I I do highly recommend uh, that channel. And there's a second channel as well by the same guy. It's called Guga Foods, G U G A Foods, and that's also a cooking channel. And but that one deals more with uh, the grill. And everything and uh, and there's a lot of uh, good uh, natured humor in these videos as well. So. All ages kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. General audiences and instructive. Exactly. Exactly. Or at least instructional. Yeah. One of those things you can put on your mobile device, set it to the side, and. Yeah. Be the culinary Bob Ross of the situation. Yeah. 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 And on the subject of uh, cooking videos, uh, I've seen a couple of these uh, videos by Gordon Ramsay recently where he's critiquing amateur cooks' uh, food and uh, uh, quite entertaining, <laughs> I will say. Um, of course, uh, Gordon Ramsay, the uh, British chef known for uh, yelling at people and being quite uh, colorful, shall we say. Yeah. Owner of restaurants, there's uh, Kitchen Nightmares where yeah. Ramsay goes around to uh, 
uh, underperforming restaurants. I believe it was first a uh, series in the United Kingdom and then mm-hmm. ran as a reality show probably on Fox alongside Hell's Kitchen. Right. right. Yeah. And uh, and uh, my understanding is one of his restaurants is uh, right here in Kansas City over at uh, Paris Casino. Whether it's still open or not, I, I don't know at this point, but um, as, uh, certainly uh, during these pandemic times, I've not gone up uh, north of the river all that much. But uh, pre-pandemic, uh, it was it was just down the uh, road from where the uh, where the uh, moved uh, chess club office was. So I would literally drive by it all the time going to the office. So, yeah. Casinos were one of the many businesses that were operating under certain restrictions. Mm-hmm. Not necessarily so true in the Las Vegas area. Right. We're talking more like the local stuff. So, yeah. yeah. Our business has not necessarily been, or at least that's not one of the main industries in the area. Oh, heck no. Tourism and travel have been highly impacted sectors. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree there. Uh, I only know a, a general thing. I, I probably should take a moment and probably watch more Bloomberg business, and I might have a better idea about what I'm talking about. I don't mm-hmm. claim to be any kind of expert, not that that matters. No one's going to be an expert here, no, sir. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. All right. So, have you given goes, any listen to? Go ahead. I go to the Brony uh, community. It's it's been an interesting it's been an interesting time. The last time you and I had spoke, the ninth season had begun mm-hmm. airing. The ninth season concluded around Columbus Day weekend in 2019. They had a spinoff show called Pony Life. It was uh, kind of a different style animation. Mm-hmm. They also have a f- fifth season coming up and that should be on Netflix this fall. Also, the style of animation has changed. The previous show, the f- what's called the fourth generation of My Little Pony was called My Little Pony Friendship is Magic was animated in Adobe Flash mm-hmm. and had a 2D style of animation they also had a movie in 2017 which was done more in toon boom animation the fifth generation will be also computer animated but the imagery will be three-dimensional they released the names of the main five characters of the, the show one of the main sites that exist in the Rony fandom, which if you haven't ever, if you don't know what that is, it's it's basically a, a fan of the program. It comes from it's a portmanteau of the phrase bro and pony. So you have the phrase brony. And that website is called Equestria Daily. Equestria is the uh, fictional land in which the characters from the fourth generation Wild Little Pony reside. Apparently. That is also the same place where the characters of fifth generation reside. However, there appear to be some more modern day contrivances that uh, exist in in our present time than existed in the universe of the fourth generation. There were steam trains uh, was about the level of technical sophistication. Mm -hmm. What's interesting is that one of the characters was introduced alongside uh, a sibling character recently and one of those characters was holding what appeared to be a mobile phone a a smartphone actually which is Mm -hmm. quite a bit more advanced than what you would be expecting for a it seemed out of place but one of the first 
pub publicity images for the fifth season mm -hmm. showed a, a bedroom with a, a lamp. And, and actually what was interesting is that when people zoomed in as they had figurines of the six main characters from the fourth generation of the show in the background. Mm -hmm. there, there's a, there's, there's excitement around the show and Pony Life was kind of a, a stop gap in between. You had a lot of the same characters from the fourth generation just in a, a different setting for a different toy line in between. I believe the second season, as far as I know, is only airing in the United Kingdom and the first season was aired on the Discovery Family Channel last year. Mm -hmm. Okay, then. I try to I try to keep up with these things, but I that's pretty cool. Yeah, the the idea of ponies using cell phones that's interesting to me. Uh, because what's interesting is that the pony characters in this universe are 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 true to to the equine archetype they have four limbs and yeah. those four limbs all have have hooves they don't have workable digits yeah. yet somehow in the little thumbs yeah what's interesting is that in the in the fourth generation show somehow they were able to manipulate their front uh, appendages in ways that are that uh, actual horses are not capable of doing. Also, the size of their craniums are a bit larger. The executive producer of the show described the characters as having human-like intelligence, although they are in equine bodies. Mm -hmm. There are also all kinds of, uh, shall we say, less than desirable and somewhat questionable elements of the Brony fandom. If I was to recommend any type of viewing on this subject, I would suggest going to a YouTube channel by Jenny Nicholson, and there is a video on there called The Last BronyCon, A Fandom Autopsy. BronyCon was one of the premier fan conventions for the Brony fandom. And uh, the middle two letters of BronyCon are NY. The primary location for the convention was New York, but I think they might have had some regional conventions. There are still some that exist to this day. Of course, last year they, they had to not hold too many of those mm -hmm. as of much course. as just about everything else was suspended. Mm -hmm. so. Wow, this guy has an ASMR video. <laughs> Brony ASMR, oh my God. <laughs> I would not know a thing about that. As long uh, as so so ASMR, over. that's when they're... Uh, whispering into the microphone and then doing uh making uh interesting interesting sounds like for instance uh that would be an example of asmr and uh some and uh I, and the idea is to uh uh relax people uh, that reminds me of a, a video i saw of a, a british uh, panel show uh, call where um, they would uh, bring in a guest and the one one panel is like well this is uh so and so and they do so -and -so. they do a uh, so and so uh, she turns out she's another one of these uh, asmr uh, people who does videos on youtube and uh, the other panel has to guess what exactly uh, uh, who exactly is telling the truth on the other panel, right? And and uh, one uh, said, uh, one of the other lies was, uh, uh, she's my uh, karate instructor. <laughs> and uh, and the uh, the guessing team there, uh, it couldn't be the ASMR thing, because it 
that rapping thing. It just sounds so confusing that I'm going to pretend I never even heard of it. <laughs> yeah. So really funny. Yeah, so. Okay, it's been about an hour. So um, do you care to wrap, wrap things up? Certainly, certainly. Yeah. Have you uh, had much involvement in the theater community since uh, Fringe Festival was, I, a lot of them have gone to the, do they call them online or distance or yeah, what? Yeah. Virtual. They've been yeah, calling them been, virtual conventions. This is the second year in a row that KC Fringe has been virtual. So. I, San Diego Comic-Con has been one of the more popular that has gone virtual plenty of uh, uh, i think i'm trying to think of what the rooster teeth convention is called mm -hmm. they've probably gone virtual that virtual has been the the keyword throughout there have been so many things that have decided to call themselves something different over the last year but virtual virtual conventions are certainly a thing and, and might be a thing that will continue for for quite some time. I'm sure the travel yeah. and tourism industries would would hope that those things. Yeah, there's been a lot of benefits to doing things virtually. I, I mentioned one earlier, you know, international participation and uh, be able to do it uh, in a home studio like this one. Um, but, uh, the, but there are certain drawbacks to it, but this will definitely be a tool I keep in my arsenal from this point forward. So, which I hear is an excellent football club around London. <laughs> yeah. Arsenal football club in North London. Yeah. Which is a perfect segue for those of you listening on the podcast, Perfect segue into our next episode. I thank you for the opportunity to join you again, Michael. Oh, uh, thanks, Chris. I, I appreciate you uh, agreeing to come on at the last minute. And uh, thanks for helping me out. And thanks for helping out uh, Casey Fringe. And uh, for those of you watching on Fringe, thanks for, uh, thanks for watching us. And uh, you got two more shows to watch. So. Uh, I will leave you to it. Thanks, and we hope to uh, see you again soon. And we hope that you'll keep uh, supporting us ever again. Thank you. Pacific